Oh, that's a good start. Try again. Good morning, good afternoon, good day to all of you wherever we might find you today. Um, thank you so much for uh, you know spending a portion of your day with us today. We really appreciate you logging on for our webinar today, and we look forward to really sharing some um, industry insights, but then also some um, some real takeaways on how you can leverage social media and other online tools to grow your sales pipeline really generating export leads online so as i can see we've got a few more that are joining us as we uh, allow a couple of minutes for people to log on today just a couple of housekeeping uh, for today so uh, the webinar will try and get you back at your desk within 45 minutes 60 minutes max we do want to keep some time at the end for Q&A, so uh, we'll try our best to answer questions as they come in throughout the presentation. But if you have any questions for our panelists, please do um, keep them coming into the chat box. There will be uh, a few polls throughout, so please do let us know how you know, you're know you using different tools and if there is anything that we can help you. So we want this session to be as interactive as possible, so please do put your hand up, do share your questions and, uh, and let us know, uh, you know, if you have anything that we can expand on at the end of today's webinar. So as we allow a few more people to log on, just a uh, quick introduction from our end. I am very, very glad to be joined today by uh, Rita Benhada, our Senior Online Marketing Manager. And then you have myself, Joel Lazzarotto, Online Marketing Director with uh, IBT Online. So. A word about ourselves at IBT Online is a, a US-based company. We have entities in the US, in Canada, and as you can tell from the accent, I am not quite American myself here in Europe. We are a private company and we are 100% focused on helping small and mid-cap companies get really leverage the online tools that they need. So we uh, really specialize in uh, websites, online marketing, and really all of the online tools that um, you need to grow your business globally in a sustainable manner. We have uh, developed what we call our online global programs. We are dedicated and we have partners with a number of states and Canadian provinces as well. Um, the goal of our program is to focus on the top line growth for exporters. So really providing those tools to help you grow your export, your sales, your brand and your business. And all of that digitally really allowing you to, to leverage what technology has to offer in today's world. Before we dive into the uh, the topic for today, I uh, just wanted to share a quick view of the agenda. So we'll have an overview of what these, uh, you know, this approach looks like. Today we talk about growing your pipeline. We talk about account-based marketing. What does that mean? And why should you really look at, uh, you know, as we say, breaking the silos. So aligning your marketing and your sales strategies. But also we'll look quickly at the, the role of online solution and what return they uh, they can provide you and then uh, we'll go into really the uh, the bulk of uh, what we want to share with you today some actionable uh, insights on key online lead generation strategies and then a few takeaways next steps and uh, very importantly q a as i mentioned at the beginning so please uh, do send us your questions throughout the presentation today Perfect. So to kick us off, very glad I'll hand over to Rita, who will just introduce us to possibly the most important element here. So Rita, off you go, take it away. Thank you, Joel. Well, in this first part of our webinar, um, I would like us to start with the base. Understanding your bio persona is an important part of the puzzle. When it comes to an effective marketing and sales strategies, uh, by um, identifying and comprehending your bio persona, you gain valuable insights into the needs, preferences, and behaviors of your target audience. Okay, so before you can start designing and developing your marketing campaigns, there is one key element you need to define, your bio persona. As HubSpot defines it, a bio persona is a semi-fictional representation of your ideal customer base on market research and real data about your existing customers. So defining a bio persona is really important because it allows you to make sure you're always reaching to the right person at the right time with the right message and it saves yourself a ton of time and resources. So what is important to keep in mind about a bio persona is that you can and you should have a few different bio personas. 
it's especially true for international biopersonas because your domestic persona is most likely going to have a different language um, they're comfort comfortable with, different lifestyles, they have a different culture, different age group, and maybe different buyer habits. So what is important to note, however, is how your international buyer persona can differ from your domestic persona, as I just mentioned. On this slide in particular, there are a few questions you should ask yourselves. Um, are there multiple buyer persona for my export markets? How do they find me? What do they care about? So take these images as a corporate B2B website. So as you can see, the top image is the US homepage. As soon as you land, you know they're in the US and that the company works in the USA. The bottom image um, maybe is a little bit more subtle is the UK homepage. So same company, same branding and all, but the image tells you immediately that you're in the UK. Just look at what side of the road they, um, the cars are driving on. So once you define your buyer persona, then you can figure out the buyer's journey. And that's very important as well. So the buyer's journey is the active research um, process someone's goes through leading up to a purchase. So it's a fundamental part of social media strategy because it's a framework you can use to understand your buyer's needs and provide the information they need to reach their goals. So every interaction your buyer has with your business should be tailored to where they are in the buyer's journey. Every potential buyer is focused on identifying the problem, that's the awareness part, understanding what option could alleviate the problem that's the consideration part. Comparing the top choices when they're ready to make, to make a purchase, evaluation, and finally the purchase. And remember, remember that your buyer persona differs across different markets, as I mentioned earlier. That's why you need to localize your website and your social media to make sure you're engaging with the local buyer persona in the way they want and also gives you more credibility. Rita, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, this really sets the scene for where we want to take this. Um, the next two sections, I'm going to move into a little bit more of an explanation and really taking what Rita has uh, just shared with us into a bit more context on. We often see when, you know, we work with, uh, with companies and we onboard new projects that, you know, we tend to work in silos and this is unfortunately the nature of a lot of industries and what tends to happen organically but aligning your marketing and your sales strategy really can provide um very big advantages on you know how you then go about providing services and uh, the best possible customer experience so before we jump into uh, again allowing rita to go into a bit more of the strategic approaches and the technical elements of what this takes i just wanted to um, maybe go through some of the terminology and here, you know, in marketing, guilty, you have two marketeers at core here. We call this ABM or account-based account marketing. So what is ABM? So ABM is an effective way to scale your marketing efforts and really, really drive um, growth. So doing so will help you reach what we call the right accounts, so help you reach the companies, but also the people within those companies, increase return on investment, and really deliver personalized experiences to your potential buyers and who those buyers are very much goes back to that buyer persona that's why we really wanted to put that at the center of this presentation at the very beginning understanding your buyer persona and understanding uh, your customer account really includes fundamentals it really you know sets the stage to execute a successful go-to-market ready strategy another term we've used here uh, that we i really like to refer to this approach is marketing this was a, a terminology coined by HubSpot themselves, which they used to define a sales marketing alignment through constant communication. So, you know, as you see here is how to align your message and the business intelligence that you have across the teams. And you have all of that within your, your team. So if you work together, marketing really helps sales and marketing teams create measurable goals that hold everyone accountable and really just contribute to your organization bottom line. So here you see you could work in two silos, marketing, taking care of whatever they want to do and then handing over to sales, not really looking at what happens after. And sales just there waiting, you know, for the CRM, looking at referrals and not really interacting. 
But for example, if you work together, define, you know, what, um, again, HubSpot defines a lead service level agreements or an SLA for marketing with a contingency, the sales must follow up with a certain number of leads they receive. All of that will bring the joint approach that will then, first of all, allow you to share the information you need, have a much more, you know, streamlined strategy, and then at the end of the day, win the business that, you know, both teams are, are then allowed, you know, are then allowed to call a win. The benefits of marketing, fewer unqualified leads, higher sales win rates, shortened the buying cycle, easier deal closing, faster revenue growth. I mean, I'm just citing some of the top, uh, you know, <laughs> some of the top wins there. But why would you not want to consider, you know, is the powerful of the alignment of the two uh, of the two teams really, you know, to me, this brings down the main difference between an ABM and a lead generation is really focusing on quality over quantity. So with your standard lead generation, uh, the goal is always to generate as many leads as possible through many different efforts. And then you have your marketing team running several campaigns, handing them over to sales. Sales are not really sure where they came from, what the context is. And then there is frustration between the two teams. There is no relevancy. There is lack of measurement. Account-based marketing really aims at identifying the target key accounts that are more likely to convert into clients. And for this, you will need to invest more time and resources at the beginning, you know, the alignment, the knowledge sharing, the relevances of your account. Really, the upfront work will then allow you to be rewarded with higher quality leads that are more likely to close in a shorter time frame. And we talk about the customer, we talk about the persona. This is very much a customer centric approach. We do feel that this is the reason why this process works, is because it puts your customer at the center not your ROI, not your company, not your product, not why you think your product is the best out there, but your customer. So, you know, we're really moving on to, we're, we're working the playing field now, whether it's online or offline as well this day, where we're presented with that omni-channel approach. We are very aware that nowadays customer's journey is not as predictable as it used to be. Everyone has access to so many different ways to research, to get in touch with your brand, to look for references or, or referrals about your, you know, client, you know, testimonials or, or reviews about your products or your services. So it's really, really important to increase the number of touch points that you have with customers. And this comes from both the marketing and the sales. Um, you know, if you want realms in, uh, in the matter of speaking, but all of these, you know, sellers, we must dynamically flex both human and digital resources with constantly changing our customer journey and really being ready for it. So we know that our B2B buyers are, you know, this is not just for B2B, it always applies for B2C, but B2B is affected as well. So what we're talking here is a new workforce, new workforce. So you will be seeing millennials and Jay-Z taking on more leadership roles. You know, as you say, they're growing up, we're growing up. So these generations are digital champions. They expect online resources, they will check out your website, they will check out your social media pages, they will want to see new content shared. And how do you create that content? How do you know what they want? Again, talk to your sales team, talk to your marketing team respectively, decide together and then create that seamless and instantaneous access to information that these new, uh, you know, these new buyers are really looking after. And where are your buyers? Well, again, we talk about omni-channel, they are on search engines, they are on your website, they are on social media, they are on uh, uh, forums, they are at trade show, they are at physical events, online events. We've got some of you here today. They're everywhere. So you must be conscious of making sure that you have the right touch points. You don't need to be everywhere, but you need to choose the ones that really are meaningful to your industry, meaningful to your buyer persona. And we go back to that concept time and time again. So all of this is just to set the scene on why, uh, you know, we advocate very strongly for online solution, digital solutions to reach your buyer persona, to reach this new buyer, uh, you know, work for, workforce and very much why aligning your sales and your marketing strategy is key. So before we dive into uh, the next portion, which is just a little bit of a look at why online and where the world is heading, I just wanted to take a second, if Rita allows me, to just launch a um, a quick poll. And I'm just very curious here, as I said, please do interact with us. We'd love to know who we've got here with us today. And what we'd love to know is, 
do you already have a, a marketing team or do you feel that you know your company is working in silos versus in tandem have you have you heard of this before you know tell us a little bit more how you feel it is promise we won't share <laughs> who you are but is i'm looking at the results here and we've got very strong 80 percent don't feel that they uh, have a marketing approach and we've got a few brave there that are coming through we're going to the 30 70 but still the vast majority of you attending with us uh they've logged on with us today do not have a uh, as marketing team so this is very interesting and thank you so much for taking part i think we've got most of you guys have voted i'm going to leave it open some people might just be evaluating just get your gut feeling what you think is happening within your team i'm just going to close the poll for now because this is very positive i'm glad to hear that we can share something today that hopefully you'll be able to take away take you to your sales team take you to marketing team depending on where which silos you're currently sitting in and really try and have a discussion and i want to go through the next um few slides rather quickly again i'm just setting some context and then i'll hand over to rita to uh, very much tell us a little bit more of an actionable a strategic approach that you can take within your team to to try and implement some of these ABM or marketing solutions. So we talked about a return on investment of online solution and we're very specific here with online and the reason being that we very much feel that the world is online. Your clients, your prospects, your future employees, even suppliers, distributors, they are all online. They're all on the local search engine, they're all on the social media profiles, they're all researching and engaging with each other online. So effective online business development tools, you must have heard us if you've attended one of our webinars before, talk about localized websites and online marketing. We have a ton of resources on that, but today I just wanted to really kind of highlight that point that we're moving from face-to-face -face into the digital networking arena Every day, we do that in the office, we do that at a trade show, we do that on a Teams meeting. It doesn't matter if you prefer face-to-face, -face, you've got to meet your buyers where they are and where they want to be found. So if they're online, you need to be cognizant that you must be online at some point in the buyer's journey. So in fact, here is a stats from Gardner. They predict that by 2025, and we're closing in very fast, 80% of all interaction in B2B sales will take place online in the digital world, 80%. That is a huge chunk. But why this is why this is the case? Well, the trends are very much heading the way. Here, I just wanted to show some very top level stats of how people are using digital resources to, you know, in the daily life, whether it's business or personal. Well, a few data points here, which I find outstanding, uh, you know, just short of 8 billion people in the world we have 67 percent of them being mobile phone users so 5.3 billion mobile phone connections and just shy of that 4.9 billion daily internet users so people using the internet daily and 4.6 billion of those are active social media users and here we can talk about social media and we'll dive into social media what does this mean I just wanted to share with you the sheer volume of traffic that goes onto some of this platform. A social media strategy in tandem with any other marketing or sales efforts that you have will build the brand, build brand awareness, connect you with your audience, and build trust. And here is just an example. It's a bit of an older slide I have here for you today, unfortunately, but it hasn't changed an awful lot. We're seeing YouTube, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, LinkedIn, all they're sharing that, you know. 50, 40%. And this is for B2B research, okay? So we're not talking about, you know, why do you have to work and I scroll, unfortunately, sitting in the sand, scrolling through social media. This is B2B buyers that are using social media channels for their B2B research. I just wanted to bring this to you to really show you that you need to take this into account and make sure that you meet your buyers where they are, how they want to be engaged with and where they want to be engaged with. So here again, going back to the idea of this seamless and instantaneous access to information, B2B buyers are looking at social media, looking at online tools to increase, you know, you could use that to increase your brand awareness, to generate leads, increase engagement of your community, and then very much increase traffic to your website. So 
I just wanted to show you this again. Unfortunately, not all of it comes for free. Where nowadays that you know we know we've talked about how the customer journey is unpredictable, and it's very important to increase the number of touch points. And here, just an example: the amount of billion of dollars that goes into social media and online advertising, to me, just goes to show that this is a platform. You know, platforms that cannot be ignored. Everyone needs to be aware of what's happening, aware of where your buyer persona is engaging. Again, you don't need to be everywhere, but you need to focus on where your buyer persona is. And to help exporters do that, we have developed what we call our online global programs, and we refer to that at the beginning. And these are programs that have been uh, um, tailored to fit in specific, you know, in your industry to your buyer persona. But we have seen our clients um, increase their export growth in global market by 30% year on year. They've seen the export growth, the sales growth domestically and internationally, brand growth, and then overall, you know, bottom line business growth. So I'm now really going to be handing over to Rita because I wanted to make sure that we have enough time to go through those key online lead generation strategies. But I just wanted to share with you guys another quick poll just to see whether there is anyone that is intrigued by these technologies and would love to, uh, you know, for us to send you some more resources and to hear a little bit more about how we can help you leverage everything that the internet has to offer whether that's social media, whether the search engine, whether that's localized website for your international target markets. There is a wealth of opportunities out there and you know, our we're here to help. So please do let us know if there's something that we can help you with. And I can see that a good portion of you guys are interested in a list to uh, hear a little bit more about how these programs could be tailored to what you guys are doing. We talk about international because obviously that's one of our biggest um, focuses exporting, but all of this is very much applicable in the US, in Canada, in you know your North American USMCA, uh, you know first target market. So don't be don't be scared when we talk about international. There is a lot that can be uh, you know applied in your in your domestic market as well. Fantastic, very enthusiastic responses here. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm just going to close this, and with without further ado, I'll hand over to Rita to talk us through some key generation strategies. Thank you, Joel. So um, now there's one thing that I want to emphasize on is SEO. And that could be for any website in the world, wherever you are. When you have a website, you need to pay close attention to SEO. So SEO, for those who are not familiar with the term, it stands for search engine optimization. It basically aims to improve a website visibility and ranking in search engine results. It's basically the practice of optimizing your website so that you can rank higher in search engine results pages like Google. So when someone searches something related to your website, you want your site to appear at the top um, of the search results. So it's important because it helps, um, it helps you get more organic traffic, um, meaning non-paid traffic. When your website ranks higher in search results, more people are more likely to click on it. Um, this means more visitors to your website, which can lead to more customers, more sales, or more engagement, depending on your website goals. So keyword research is the utmost importance in digital marketing, as it holds significant relevance in various aspects. So first of all, um, it helps enhance organic visibility and drive organic traffic to website or online platforms. By identifying and utilizing the right keywords, you can optimize your content for search engines, ensuring that your offerings are more easily discovered by potential customers. So keyword research enables targeted audience engagement as it allows marketers to understand the specific words and phrases the target audience is using to search for products or services. So this knowledge empowers you, uh, you to tailor your content and messaging accordingly, effectively connecting with your desired customer's base. So keyword research provide a competitive edge by uncovering untapped keyword opportunities that competitors may have overlooked. Um, by targeting this less competitive keywords, you can increase your chances of ranking higher in search results and attracting relevant traffic. So the most important 
part is to make your keyword research effective as it also plays a crucial role in, conver in conversion potential by understanding the keywords that are more likely to lead to conversions or, desired, or, or your desired action. You can optimize your landing page and call to action strategies which will result in higher conversions and the overall business success. So there are ways to improve your SEO by doing some keyword research that you will have on your website that I just mentioned. There's also the metadata, that's another part um, that you find on the back end of the website. You have to use the right keywords on that part as well um, by creating engaging content, et cetera, et cetera. But now, before improve, improving your SEO, you need to know if there is an actual problem with your website, right? And what are the problems? So here's a tool that my colleague um, Joelle is gonna share with you in the chat. It's completely free. All you have to do is copy and paste the website of your company in the link and complete the form that literally takes 30 seconds and you will receive a detailed report by email. All the, all the issues that you have on your website um, um, will be on that report. And that report will give you insights on what you need to be improved on your website. So, Content mapping for the buyer's journey involves understanding the challenges, the pain points and interests um, of your target audience and aligning your content accordingly. So it starts with identifying the relevant terms and keywords that your potential customers use when searching for a solution to their problems. So by conducting that keyword research, you can optimize your content with these keywords, making them more discoverable to your target audience. Also, you need to consider the format of your content. Some individuals prefer blog posts, while others prefer videos, infographic, interactive tools, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, by mapping that content to the preferred formats, you can effectively engage and capture the interest of your audience. Moreover, um, it's also essential to address the pain points and challenges um, your potential customers face throughout their buyer's journey. So by creating content that offers valuable insights, practical tips, and solutions to these pain points, you can establish yourself as a trusted authority in your industry, in your industry and build stronger connection with your, with your audience. Ultimately, content mapping helps ensure that your content is relevant, valuable, and tailored to the needs and interests of your target audience. Um, it also increases the chances of driving engagement, generating leads, and converting um, them into loyal customers. So content journeys for the buyer's journey um, is, uh, sorry, content mapping for um, the buyer's journey is a strategic approach um, that involves aligning your content with the different st stage of the customer's buying process. So by mapping your content, you can effectively guide your online visitors down to the sales funnel. So each piece of the content serves as um, serves a specific purpose and is tailored to resonate with a particular target audience or buyer persona. So it all starts in the awareness stage. So you provide informat informative and educational content that introduces your brand and addresses the pain points of your potential customers. Then we have the consideration stage. That stage, you offer content that highlights the unique value proposition of your products or services, and it helps prospects evaluate um, their options. And then finally, we have the decision stage. So that one, that stage provides content that showcase testimonials, case studies, um, and encourage prospects to make a purchase. So by mapping your content to the buyer's journey, you can nurture leads, um, build trust, and ultimately increase conversions. So a structured social media approach helps businesses reach the right people with the right message at the right time. It uses data and audience segmentation to tailor content and ads to specific demographic and interests. So this targeting increases the chances of engaging with individuals who will connect with the brand. Consistent and compelling content builds brand awareness and establishes um, thought leadership. So by sharing valuable content, brands become trusted, sources of expertise, uh, fostering credibility and gaining a loyal following.
So this approach also generates leads by capturing the interest and contact information of your potential customers, um, strategic campaigns and compelling call to action drive sales and revenue growth. So organic social media. So organic social media is all about growing your online presence without paying for it. It involves using smart tactics like search engine optimization, SEO that I've talked about earlier, creating interest posts on social media to get more people to visit your website or your platform. So, sorry, by regularly sharing valuable content and building a loyal following, organic social media helps establish your authority and your relevance in your industry. So the impact of organic social media can vary in different mass. It depends on things like using the right keywords, getting the backlinks from other websites, having a strong domain authority, and keeping your content fresh and relevant. Um, in, the, in the end, organic social media is a great way to steadily bring, um, bring in targeted traffic over the long term. So in here, we can see um, a graph that represents the last 12 months of B2B content marketers um, that have um, heavily uh, relied heavily on various organic social media, media platforms to reach their target audience. So LinkedIn, as you can see, is on the top choice for B2B. I'm talking about B2B in here. With 96% um, of B2B content marketing, uh, marketers um, that utilize this, um, this social media platform followed by Twitter and Facebook, um, with both platforms being leveraged by 82% of marketers to engage with the audience and share valuable content. Then we have YouTube, which is more video centric, um, a video-centric approach. Um, it proved to be a valuable tool for 62% of marketers. Um, it's allowed them to showcase the products or services in a visually compelling ma uh, manner. Instagram had um, a slightly lower ad adoption rate of 49%. It still offered opportunities for marketers to tap into the platform visually driven nature and connect with the audience through compelling um, imagery. So these organic social media platforms have played a significant role in the B2B um, content marketing landscape, um, enabling marketers to establish their brand share industry insights and foster meaningful connection with the target audience. Now that's my favorite part, it's organic plus paid social media. So combining these two um, social media strategies, it can yield to significant benefits because it enhances the overall performance of your online presence. So the, while the organic um, efforts focus on building a community and fostering long-term relationships, the paid social media, on the other hand, it allows you to jumpstart your visibility, particularly in the international markets. So investing in paid advertising, it helps generate immediate traction, reaching a broader audience and driving initial engagement. On the other hand, the organic um, efforts, it builds that solid foundation um, for sustained growth by nurturing authentic connection and fostering brand loyalty. So the synergy between these two approaches is crucial. As based social media creates opportunity while organic um, strategies ensure that long-term success um, and sustainability. So, um, and that's another interesting graph uh, focused on the organic plus paid social media. Um, here we can see that in the past 12 months, B2B content marketers have leveraged a combination of organic um, and paid strategies on various social media platforms to maximize their reach and engagement. So according to that recent data, uh, LinkedIn emerged as the voice um, of top choice with 80% of marketers utilizing its paid features to promote their content. Um, Facebook closely followed with 67% um, of marketers investing in paid campaigns to target the desired um, audience. And then we have Twitter and Instagram and YouTube also proved to be valuable platforms with 27, 26 and 17% of marketers respectively incorporating paid strategy into their social media efforts. So by embracing both organic and paid um, approaches across these diverse platforms, B2B content marketers have been able to effectively amplify the content um, and connect with the target audience in meaningful ways.
Peter, thank you so much. I think we'll give you a little break. I'll just jump in for a second here, <laughs> if that's okay. I think that's that's fantastic. And um, again, we just really wanted to give you a pretty information packed uh, little session today on a little bit of the basics of why we think you know ABM was marketing is very much the best way to get the most out of your online tools. But then as Rita showed you, there are so many different ways that you can leverage social media, organic, paid. You don't need to jump all in at the beginning with all of this. But I just have one last poll before we move on to a, a few takeaways. And uh, and then I can see you guys have been very good with some very interesting questions. So I just want to make sure that we have a few minutes at the end. I just wanted to launch a very last poll. Um, Maybe the wording here is not as correct as it's quite similar to the previous one, but just here, if anyone would like to uh, know a little bit more about how SEO, organic social media, paid social media, organic and paid social media can really support you in your um, ABM use marketing and in your international lead generation strategies, do let us know. Um, Rita and the team, myself, are looking forward to having these conversations and very much just exploring what this can mean for you in uh, in the long run. So I can see a few of you are thinking about it. A few of you would like to uh, to receive more information, which is fantastic. And again, uh, we'll mention it at the end. But if you come away from today's session and you think, oh, I should have asked that, or I wish that this was covered, please don't hesitate to to get in touch. We will share our contact details at the end of this presentation and uh, you will receive a recording of today's session uh, over the next, I want to say, 48 hours as soon as we have the, the time to process it. And then you'll have our contact details there as well. So please do reach out. We are very much here to help. So wrapping up today's session with a few um, key takeaways. If you walk away from today, remember two things is the world is online so uh, make sure that you understand who your buyer persona is and where they interact where do they engage where do they do business where do they source for information what keywords they use to source for information talk to your you know your sales team will know what the big features of the products the most successful features are and your marketing team will know how to find these people and how to understand where they live and where they operate. So get together and really leverage that online world that is out there. We always like to say, you know, digital strategies, they are no longer a nice to have, you know, toolkit in uh, all of the different strategies that you're using in your business. They're now a necessity. You really need to make sure that if you want to be part of that future of sale, then you do invest in, uh, in online strategies. Future of sales, we've seen, uh, you know, a lot of research is telling us that it will be digital first, hyper automated, digital first engagement. A lot of people don't want to talk about, you know, they don't want to reach out to salespeople. They want to do the research online first. And when they're ready, when they have questions, they will reach out to you. They will then be ready to make that contact, as uh, Rita was mentioning, you know, be on that buyer's journey. Omni channel is going to be key look at your channels look at your buyer persona and then invest on selected channels where you know you're going to have the biggest impact and then expand and replicate and again we could not stress it enough make sure that your approach is always 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 customer centric company really must invest in digital technology that improves the buyer experience and that is being mindful about what information you're sharing at what point in the journey what channel is that designed for and how can you make their experience the best it possibly can? And obviously, this is going to lead to fewer interaction, but much better. And that's what we were mentioning at the beginning is going to streamline and really fast track that, um, that sales uh, pipeline and the sales cycle. One word again about what we do. At IBT Online, we have worked with over 650 um, companies in the US by helping them make the internet work for them globally 24-7, 365 days a year. Our best practice, optimally localized business development website should and really can be your best salesperson and your best marketing person, your best marketing person out there 
it is into you know design with international focus you will be found you will be understood you will become easier to do business with and is out there working hard for you together with your online marketing strategy across search engines social media marketing reporting and analytics growing traffic to your website engagement with your channels and then conversions really driving that pipeline of leads successful leads and sales qualified leads so this is in a nutshell again our online global programs helping you grow your export your sales your brand and your business globally locally and uh, uh, very much sustainably so we have a ton of free resources on the website there are recordings from previous webinars and um, weekly videos follow us follow us on linkedin to be updated on all of the latest blogs that we release everything is on our website but at this point in time i very much want to open the floor to a few questions that uh, we've been monitoring in the background um, we've seen a few of you sharing your urls your websites with us do take them to the seo tool is free to use rita mentioned it takes 30 seconds so you'll receive a nice report very user-friendly report uh, on your email and then if you have any questions absolutely uh, we're here to help but um rita i'm just going through the questions and conscious of time we said everyone 45 minutes we've got a few minutes to uh, to spare um we've i'm just trying to summarize here a little bit um so i think you mention here the importance of keyword research for SEO. Is there anything else that can be or should be taken into consideration to improve uh, search engine rankings and organic visibility, whether that's social media or my website? I'm putting together a few questions, so I hope that helps. <laughs> so I think that um, besides keyword research, um, we also have the metadata that I've mentioned earlier. Basically how we should see it is that SEO is at the top, it's the search and giant optimization, and it involves many actions that we should take into consideration. So we had the keyword research, we had the metadata, we had the backlinks, we had the images, etc. All these things um, that we should take into consideration to improve that um, um, search and giant optimization and rank higher, um, and rank higher um, on the, um, uh, on Google or any other platform. That's brilliant. There is a lot of work that goes into SEO, so we look forward for those of you that were interested to diving into uh, into a few more details. I can see a, a question that's come through um, during the webinar. Do you have any recommendation or best practices on how to meaningfully engage in LinkedIn groups that are industry oriented or professional skills oriented, other than posting an article? I'm going to take this, Rita, if that's okay, because uh, you you worked with me for a few years now. You'll know this is a little bit of a uh, a passion of me and it's LinkedIn groups. Um, LinkedIn groups is a very powerful yet very hard and time-consuming element to manage in uh, the social media strategy. The reason being that LinkedIn groups are um, quite secluded, so you need to be very active for your posts to show organically on other member groups. So I think is excellent to know which groups you're targeting but there are some tools for example linkedin advertising linkedin uh, um, blogging that will allow you to reach these audiences that are part of these groups outside yeah. of those target groups so you can use that knowledge that you've gathered when you know that your buyer persona is engaged in these groups professional or skill oriented and then take that knowledge and use it to target them directly with your messaging whether that is posting an article on your page for everyone to see, but then uh, you know promoting it to these audiences or whether it's sharing some promoted content to them. I know I'm going a little bit more, you can tell I'm an advertiser by nature. I'm going a little bit more on the, the pay side straight away, but that's very effective and a lot more um, scalable than having to manage you know, your presence or your interaction with tens and maybe you know, 20, 30 LinkedIn groups. So I hope this, helps i hope this is uh, uh maybe not what you were hoping to hear but i hope this is somewhat uh somewhat helpful um there was another question that came in uh we talk about b2b a lot in this presentation obviously a lot of this uh also applies to b2c but people were asking about uh whether instagram is a suitable platform for reaching and engaging with target audiences 
or others are adding is which social media platform would we recommend? This is a very good question. <laughs> um, I think it. <laughs> I was going to say, Rita, I know you, you want to jump on that one, go for it. All right. So um, I think that Instagram can be a suitable platform for reaching um, and engaging with your um, target audience as a B2B company, um, but it depends on your business goals. So based on my experience, Instagram is a very popular among B2C brands. Um, it has also gained traction in the B2B space. Uh, I mean, it has a billion um, monthly active users. Um, I feel like this platforms, it gives you an opportunity to showcase your company culture, et cetera, et cetera. However, when it comes to B2B marketing, I would recommend um, other social media platforms and that might be that might be a little bit more effective. Um, and I'm talking about LinkedIn in particular, a highly recommended um, platform for B2B companies. Um, I mean, it has that professional focus, um, it has that networking capabilities, et cetera, um, to the social media platforms. It, I mean, it allows you to connect with industry professionals, et cetera. Um, so I think it's it's one of the um, most relevant um, social media platforms for, for B2B in particular. Thank you so much, Rita. I think that's a very comprehensive answer. Perfect. We are running close to the 45 minutes. We are, we've promised you to uh, to stick to one last question I've seen in different formats coming through. Um, how can we learn? And uh, again, people want to learn more about the online global programs without necessarily hearing it from us, which is absolutely fair. And that's what we advocate here. Please do head over to um, our website we have uh, dedicated um, pages for online global programs whether in the us or in canada and we also have um, video testimony where you can hear from our state partners you have we have video testimonies where you can hear it from uh, our customers whether you are in a um, e-commerce uh, b2c e-commerce b2b um, a very niche medical instrument audience uh, targeting we have a wide range of client testimonials that hopefully can provide you with some insights on how these programs have uh, supported them in a variety of markets. I'm thinking top of my head now, I should have looked up the number, Rita, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think at the moment we're running online global program in something like 40, 65 different markets in 42 different languages. So there is a variety out there of uh, resources that you can access. And if you have any question, I cannot repeat it enough. Get in touch with us. Find us on LinkedIn. Again, going back to Rita, we spend an awful lot of time on, on LinkedIn, you know, for work and for pleasure. Um, send us an email. You receive an email with a recording of today's session so you can respond to that. Don't hesitate to get in touch. We love to be able to provide uh, more information or point you in the right direction. So, Rita, thank you so much for a very information-packed session today i hope everyone's enjoyed it and look at that for once we're nearly on time we've just went over a few minutes but thank you uh, everyone for for staying with us for logging on today wishing you all a fantastic rest of this short week and uh, as i said we'll be in touch with the recording and we look forward to getting in touch personally with those of you who have requested for us to do so if you have sent us a question and we it was maybe a bit specific we haven't got around to it we will get back to you uh, via email over the next couple of days. So do bear with us. You'll hear from us again. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day, Rita. Thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you in the next webinar. Thank you, everyone.